Hello, Ben Homer, Utah Shakes here again. Um, so we've talked about basic textures in one session. We've talked about more advanced textures in the second session. Now we're going to talk about once you've built that texture, how do you make it pop and read on stage? Um, so f real quick, a couple of quick examples. Um, this is um, uh, Wilbur, not from that play. That's uh, just what our crew named him. This is a pig we made for a production of Foxfire. His skin is actually terry cloth fabric. So it's basically a towel fabric. We took a little bit of glue and some black paint and some brown paint, mixed it all together and brushed it into the terry cloth um, to give it sort of this fur look. And it actually has like this amazing sort of feel. Um, if you touch it, it feels like sort of bristly fur because the glue hardened up those fibers of the terry cloth and gave it just a really great texture. Um, so a tactile texture, not just a visual texture. Um, uh, so uh, there's lots of ways to do that. The important thing is once you've created that texture, the way to bring it out is highlight and shadow. Um, so we have a couple different products. Um, they don't need to be these, but you want to make sure that for your shadow, you probably want to use something that has a glaze base. And a glaze base is actually transparent instead of opaque in, its, uh, in the base layer that they mix the color into. Um, and that allows for whatever color is underneath it to show through. So we have two. This is called um, Asphaltum. It's by a company called Valspar. Um, it has a black sort of base to it. And I'm just pouring some out here so we can work with it. And then we also have, this is a, um, a Rust-Oleum product. Um, it's called Java Brown Glaze. It's actually made to like age your kitchen cabinets. Um, but again, because it has a clay glaze base and it's brown, we have found it's really helpful in kind of what we're, what we're going to do today. So uh, I'm going to take the samples from uh, session one. Um, and I'm going to glaze half of each one of them. Um, so you can kind of see, and I'll do brown on some and black on some. So basically, you're just going to cover the whole surface with the glaze. And you want to work kind of fast. And this is a little messy, so you may want to put down um, something to protect your work surface or put on gloves or whatever. It's totally up to you. Um, uh, I probably should have put on an apron or a different shirt. But, um, and then you can decide how dark you want it to be, how long you leave it on there. Uh, for time's sake, I'm going to wipe it off pretty much right away. And you want to apply a decent amount of pressure. Um, and you want to start wiping it off. And what you're going to see is, and you can wipe as much as you want or as little as you want, but it's going to start sort of going into those crevices that you made with the tissue paper. And it's going to start giving you some great texture. Okay, so that's, that's um, tissue paper light. Okay, now tissue paper heavy, where you can already see the texture, we're going to go into the brown again for this one. Um, you're going to get a, a much, um, a lot more read on this because you have more texture for it to play with, um, more places for it to sort of dive into and marry with. So again, um, it just picks up all of that texture and makes it really read. And if you think this is too light, go back in and put another coat on. Totally fine. Let it sit for another minute or two. Let it really soak in there. Totally fine. That's the great thing about paint. Um, if, this, if this turned out awful and I hated it, let it completely dry, put a coat of green on it, start over. Um, not going to affect anything. So you can wipe lighter and keep more of that dark, that dark color on there. Right? Okay, so we have the lace that we did in section one. We're going to switch to the the black on this one. Um, and again, because you've built that texture up, you want to make sure your brush is really getting down in there and getting into the pattern. Because then when you wipe, it sort of brings that lace to life. You can actually see all of that pattern on there. Right? And then you look over here, it looks just plain. And all of a sudden, and again, if it's too dark, just wipe more and pull more of it out. So you get to control how much of that texture you're seeing. It's just, it's just so cool. Um, and then the wallpaper, again, you want to make sure you're getting your dark color down into those, the lowest points on your piece is where it wants to sit. So when you wipe, you're pulling it off the top and creating that depth. The depth is the important part, right? Okay. Now, this not only works on flat surfaces. We do it a ton 
on dimensional things as well. So here's an example of a, a decorative carving. This is a foam carving. This has really heavy, and we let it sit for a long time before we wiped it off. This half, um, same exact treatment, but we put it on and immediately wiped it off. So we get a lot more of that white and lighter color showing through. Um, here's another little piece that we did um, where we painted it beige first, put the black on, let's see a little wiped it out, but it dug into all those little crevices. We came back with gold leaf, which we'll talk about just for a minute at the end to highlight a couple little spots on it. Um, this little angel, guys, I painted half of this, I spray painted half of this yesterday. So that's it with no aging or highlighting or anything. And then same thing with aging and highlighting. It just pulls out all that detail, like all the little feathers on the wing and all the little leaves, acanthus leaves down here. It just, it's amazing how a little bit of dark glaze and a little bit of wiping it off, how it brings out all of that detail. Um, one more piece, this is a little, this is a wood emblem um, um, that we bought. Um, we kind of did a, a real simple wood grain on it. Um, and again, we're gonna go back into the brown glaze here um, and just get it down in there. Takes a little bit of time, so I should still be talking to you. Um, and, and then you just wipe it off. And again, as much as you want to pull off or not pull off, tells you how dirty, how old it is. It looks completely different than it did just a minute ago. Um, has a lot of character to it. Um, so um, there's just tons of examples of that. So this is a little, this is part of a lamp, a brass lamp. Fairly simple on this side, has a lot of detail to it, but all of it doesn't really read. So we highlighted and shadowed it on this side, and it just pops all of that stuff out. And again, you have to decide. If you did this to every single piece on stage, your audience would go crazy. It'd be way too much sensory overload. So you have to decide. Pick the pieces you really want to pop. Give them as much texture and detail as you want. Um, go into our little box here um, that we made um, in sec section two. We're going to take the black glaze. Um, and maybe we don't need to do the entire box. Maybe we decide that um, this button here in the middle is really important to the, um, the person whose box this is, and so they rub it a lot or something. So we want that to have a little more um, texture to it. But maybe some of the other box parts are, are not as dirty. Maybe the beads have a lot of wear to them. You know, so you can kind of decide. Um, one of the things I love to do um, when we have like a brand new piece of furniture is trying to figure out like, how do people touch this? You know, like, where's it going to wear and rub the most? Because when you get out of a chair, you push on the, if it has arms, you push on the arms. So the front edges of the arms are going to be more worn down than other spots. If it has a, a footrest across the front, you're going to put some wear on that because people's feet have rubbed against that over and over and over. Um, and you get to kind of choose um, how much you age or distress things. So again, and you can wipe as much as you want or as little as you want. Um, but again, we're just sort of adding tons of age and distressing to our box really quickly and easily. Um, and you could do another layer. You could add the brown if you want more, more contrast or color. Maybe the ring doesn't have quite enough. You're like, oh, I want to get into some of those grooves a little more. That's fine. Just do a lighter wipe the second time. Totally fine. You get a control. So again, if you hate it, looks terrible, spray paint it red, start over. Super simple. It's the best thing about paint. It's really hard to screw up um, because until you've put 10 or 12 coats on uh, there and really built it up, you're not going to lose a lot of that detail. So it gives you a great chance to sort of mess around and play a little bit, right? Okay, so that's shadow. That's half of the battle. The other half of the battle is highlight. Um, so I'm going to show you some samples of highlight um, on the same boards. And then hopefully by the time we finish highlighting, um, some of our shadow will be done and we can do a little bit of highlight and shadow on the same piece. So you can see how both work together. But the shadow stuff needs a little bit of time to dry. Um, otherwise it'll just turn into mud. Are you gonna come up? This is Turtle, our shop cat, who's going to make an appearance. There she is. Um, she loves the attention. Hi, hi Goose. Um, so we'll go back to our, um, our light um, tissue paper. Um, I've never heard the term dry brushing, um, but a good way to do highlighting is dry brushing. So you wanna get as much paint off of your um, brush as you can, and then find somewhere to sort of 
again, paint, again, most of the paint out of it. So you have just a little bit. And then you want to hold it almost parallel to your surface and just lightly drag it across the surface. And you're seeing how it's picking up even like these really slight creases in the tissue paper. It's just popping those right out. And again, the harder you push, you're going to get paint, you're going to get um, brush lines and stuff. So you can control how much of that you show. Um, and again, if it doesn't work out, you get too many brush strokes in there, that's fine. Paint it pink, start over. Um, and this is just going to kind of repeat itself. And the great thing is this uses so little paint. Um, it's ridiculous. So here we have our heavy texture. And this is going to pop like crazy. Uh, our lace. I'm just going to pick up all of those great lines in that fabric. You can even, like, there's a really fine hatching of the lace here. It'll grab all of that. It's just really cool. Um, and then our textured wallpaper, same thing. It's just going to pull all of that top layer forward. So you're basically using the glaze, the dark color, to push the background further back, and then the highlight to pop the highest layer forward. So you're creating even more depth um, with those three layers. Um, we haven't messed with the sand, the, the, um, uh, this is sawdust, um, uh, in this session. So, um, it's going to catch all of that texture. We use this a lot for like, um, old barn wood, uh, or sometimes bark of a tree. If you want a lot of texture, we might do like a tissue paper, a heavy tissue paper, and then some sawdust on top of that to give us like a really great textured, um, bark sort of treatment. Um, there you go. And then on our, our cool little box here, it is not quite dry. So I'm gonna be careful that I don't, hopefully don't pull too much of the black up, but I'm just really careful. Starts to pull all of those details forward by hitting those highlights, hitting the tops of the beads so you have the shadow of the beads going back and then the highlight of the bead coming forward. There you go. And then it looks like, at least the lace, it looks like on the lace at least the shadow stuff has dried. So to give you the, the full effect of both, we can go over the black here. And see, so if you look at, you know, this part here, which was just plain paint on the lace, and then how much more character, depth, highlight, all that this gives you, it's just, it is, it's amazing how much more detail, you know, you could find something that exists, you know, like this angel that already has some decent shadowing to it. This is a Christmas tree topper, you know, and you go, well, that's nice. It's got some great shadow in it. I bought it that way or whatever, but I want to pop it even more. You know, you bring your highlight in here and you hit the ends of those leaves or the wings. You know, you get to control how much or how little. If it gets to be too much, redo it. It's totally fine. You can reuse it multiple times. Some of these panels I've repainted multiple times back to the base coat and have done the highlight and shadow treatment on them several times for workshops like this. So paint is really forgiving. You will get dirty, so just be aware of that. Um, one last real quick thing. Um, you can go even one step further and there are products called Gilder's Paste. Um, they have a couple different names. Um, Rub and Buff um, is made by a company called American Art Clay Company. Um, Gilder's Paste is another brand. It's basically a colored wax um, that comes in different colors. And normally you would wear gloves with this. I'm going to be bad and not do that. Um, and it, it just gets on your finger. And then you take it. I don't want to do these because they're still really wet. Um, so maybe try this. Um, and you, just, you wipe it on. We're doing the edge here. And then you have to let it dry for um, a couple of minutes. And then you can buff it, and it'll come to a really pretty shine. So you, again, you could take this and um, you know, hit your beads. If you want them to be a little bit, have a little bit of silver highlight or whatever. Um, uh, it's kind of like gold leafing or gilding, um, uh, which we use imitation gold leaf. We do a lot of gold leafing, but it's all imitation. Uh, it's colored aluminum foil, basically. Um, which is how you get sort of um, 
the really metallic look here. This is, this is imitation gold leaf or these leaves on this thing here that I just did the silver on, that's imitation gold leaf. So you get a really strong metallic feel with that. Um, and that's something that you can easily do as well. But this Gilder's Paste um, is uh, less expensive and um, uh, just as easy to use. And then, yeah, you can just polish it up and it gives you a nice metallic sheen. It comes in tons and tons of colors. Um, in this Baroque Art one, I think there's like 50 or 60 different colors. It even comes in like... Uh, Verdigree copper, so it has a green tinge to it. Um, maroons has all kinds of stuff to it. So that's another, you don't have to only think about highlight and shadow. Um, you could also think about embellishment, kind of like with this orb, how we did the gold, and then we came back with the red jewels and the pearl looking jewels to add another layer. Color can be one of those layers that you add. And on that note, you don't have to go with black and white. You could do the shadow on this in a dark blue or a navy blue or a purple um, and then do the highlight in you know a light blue or a green or a yellow you could so you can choose what colors you use to create that shadow and highlight um, if you want to make a glaze out of a color um, some stores some box stores and i think even like ace now has like a clear glaze they'll put color in it for you so you can make your own colors of glaze or you can mix, you can get clear glazing liquid and you can mix some paint into it um, and figure out the ratio that works for you to get the color and the saturation that you want. So there's a lot of different ways to achieve these looks. Um, just remember, use all in moderation. You don't want everything to be like so um, overly focused um, and highlighted and shadowed that you can't bear to look at it. Um, but I hope today I gave you a couple of ideas of ways that you can, one, create texture um, on your props for not a lot of money, um, and then how to sort of pop that texture to really help it read um, and create some really cool props for your productions in the future. Thanks, and we'll catch you next time.